Hey everybody, Dan Harlager from On One, back again with another sneak peek video of some of the cool stuff that we're working on for the future. In this one, I've got a plethora of improvements to SkySwap AI. First off, and probably my most favorite new thing, are all the improved skies that we've added with it. We've created a partnership with OcuDrone to include 125 of his best skies. And these things are breathtaking. I'm gonna scroll through some of them so you can take a look. They are hands down the most dramatic skies that I've ever seen. And they're in the whole gamut. Blue skies, cloudy skies, sunset, sunrise, stormy, everything that you could ever want for a sky. And they're amazing high quality skies. These are all shot by a professional drone pilot who's out and working all the time. So he sees cloud formations that most of us would never see in our lifetimes. And they're included in here. So it's a really great add on. Let me give you some ideas of how you can use these. All right, let's work with this really amazing photo. The mountains are beautiful, the water is beautiful, the tree with the eagles is beautiful, the sky a little empty. I think we could use an Ocudone sky to pump it up just a little bit. All right, over here in SkySwap AI, there's a button right here for the Ocudone sky. If you click that, it's going to jump right to those. You can also access them from here in the category combo box, and they all start out conveniently enough with Ocudone. So you just go through and pick out one of the ones you want. I think there's six or eight different categories. I'm going to go to the cotton candy skies to start. There we go. Already that's added quite a bit more interest to it. One of the things that's important to think about when you're replacing skies is to look for one that will harmonize well with your foreground. It needs to be in the same color families and it needs to be shot at a similar time of day. I can't take something with a blue puffy sky and put it in this late evening photo. It's not going to look realistic. So when I'm looking for one, always look for one with the same colors, same tones in it. So this is a good one. I'm going to go down. I'm going to turn the reflection on. We're lucky because this Photo has a lot of water in the foreground, so we can actually add a bit of a reflection. Now that looks pretty good, but maybe there's an even better one. So I'm gonna look around in that sky category and see if I can find other ones that I like even better. Oh, that one would work pretty well too. Let's see what else we got in here. Mm, oh, look at that one. All right, that one is gorgeous. Harmonizes well with the photo, adds some interest to the sky. Let's make a couple adjustments so that we can make the foreground and back background match their absolute best. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the color of the sky to be a little bit cooler. So I'm going to grab the temperature slider. You see if I move it to the left, it's going to make it cooler, right, warmer. I want this to be a little bit cooler and a little bit darker to help match my foreground better. Next thing I want to do is I want to cool off the mountains just a little bit. So I'm going to enable the foreground lighting option. It's automatically picked kind of a average purpley color from the sky. I want to make that a little bit more blue. So I'm just going to grab a blue in the sky with a dropper and then I can just turn that amount up. Really just doing this to help it harmonize better with the new sky. And then down at the bottom with the reflection, I wanna tweak the reflection just a little bit as well. I'm gonna shift the clouds around just a little bit. I can move those up or down so that I get the best looking reflection that I can. I'm gonna go to a slightly softer mode, soft light instead. There we go. That's pretty amazing. Let's take a look at a before and the after. So there's before, the original, and after by swapping out with one of those powerful OcuDrone skies and making a few adjustments so that it blends in and looks realistic. Another thing you might notice is that the quality of the mask is improved. Inside of this tree, it's a very thick tree, but it's got all these tiny little hair thin branches on it. The update in the mask quality based on all of the improvements we've made with uh, AI masking really allows us to maintain all those tiny little branches and blend in and look realistic on a new sky. You're going to see a similar improvement to things like buildings, radio antennas, anything that can be thin or a similar color to the sky. We've also added a couple controls based on your guys' feedback and our experiences with Sky to deal with some of the more tough scenarios. Let me show you the two that we've added. Here's a good example. Not every photo that we take has a level horizon, but in the past, SkySwap kind of assumed that, so it always made sure that the sky was nice and straight. Well, that would lead to a foreground that went one direction and a sky that was flat. We've now added a level control so you can adjust the orientation of the clouds to match. Let me show you it in action here. I'm just going to add another one of those OcuDrone skies, one that I think works well with this photo. I'm going to warm it up just a little bit just to make it match the foreground a bit better. I'm going to turn off the foreground lighting. I don't need to add any adjustments to it. There we go. Now, as I mentioned, you'll notice that the horizon is going one way and the sky is going another. This is where we'll use the new level slider right here in the position section. This allows me to rotate that sky so that I can make it the correct angle to match my photo. So something more like that. Now it looks a lot more realistic blended into my photo. There's before and there's after, just like that. 
Let me show you another control that we've added, which really improves your ability to swap trees onto a lighter or darker colored background than what the original was. Here's a really tough one. We're gonna go from this bright blue sky to a dark orange sunset. You can see I've put that new sunset behind it, but it's a very different brightness and a very different color. So it's very hard on a tree to make that look realistic. You can see that even though it's done a great job of masking the photo, the actual semi-transparent part of the trees, the actual branches themselves are kind of showing some of that color and some of that brightness through them. So we really need to kind of burn those down, but we can't just burn down everything. We only want to burn down the branches. So we've added a control here in the foreground lighting section called edges. And as we bring edges up, it's just gonna darken the things that are on the edges in the photo. So you can see I can turn that up and it's taking the edges and bringing them and making them darker. That works hand in hand with the foreground slider, which also allows us to darken the foreground and change the color in the foreground as well so that we can really adjust those branches so that it looks realistic on our new sky. All right, there you go. A handful of improvements to SkySwap AI. We can't wait for you guys to see it. Thanks for watching.